Hi there, this is Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio, just taking you through the eDNA or electronic DNA engine that we've created for our Earth library, but it's now been rolled out to several other of our key lines, for example, Albion One and our forthcoming library, the Joey Santiago, which is very exciting. So we thought it was timely to just have a quick, brief chat about how the front end works so you can get tweaking because it is tweak masters heaven this interface absolutely fantastic to work with i have a lot of fun uh, coming up with a lot of the sounds for things like stevenson's and that so we're going to actually work with one of albion one's sounds a very simple string sound very simple um it has a kind of purity that i think is really useful to, uh, to demonstrate the the basics of what you can do with this stuff the basic concept of edna is that you have two sound sources or vanilla instruments uh, one loaded into bay a one loaded into bay b and you can cross fade between them very much like a dj uh, record or cd uh, mixer so let's start at the top here this is our library area our kind of management of the uh, vanilla instrument here's the name of the i'm not even going to try and uh, it's whatever it's called soft far we can go into the the library that's contained within the cartridge down here and it's in there somewhere where are you there she is if you hold down shift it actually moves a bit slow, a bit more manageable. Uh, whilst going through the different sounds, you can also star them according to your preferences, and you'll see different ratings have different colours. So let's unrate that, let's unrate this, and let's return to the original sound. Actually, I do like that sound, so let's give that a four star, and you'll see when you go back there, it's got a four star. It enables you to browse stuff a lot easier. Yes, if you want to get rid of all the sounds that are in memory uh, and save on system resources, you can purge them all there and unpurge them. So we've got this sound loaded in. This mutes it. This gets rid of it. And this browses between them. So we have a mirror image of this on the right hand side so we can select the sound that we'll be using for this and this is what it is, rope works. So a very dysfunctional version of the strings to the left. If I do a bunch of tweaks on this side that are specific to this bay but I think they might work better for this sound, I can simply swap them here. There we go. So these parameters are kept and we just swap the sounds around. Very handy little tool, that. Okay, so this little bit here is a bunch of parameters that just apply to A, this conversely to B. They're a mirror image of each other. From this point down, the parameters largely affect the, the sound of the unified uh, signal, if you will. There are exceptions to that. So let's have a quick go through these individual parameters. We've got our oscillators at the top here, a volume one. Pitch one here. These up and downs describe direction of travel. So if you want something rising first, do that. If you want it going down. Conversely, this will go up to the high pass first and down to the low pass after which brings us conveniently on to okay to the low pass and the high pass filters low pass here as you'd expect high pass and their little cues here we can tune each sound And we can also offset it, i.e. transpose. So we've gone down 10, and we're going to go up 10 keys here. So same pitch as before, but timbrely different because we're actually using the samples differently or probably accessing completely different samples. So let's listen to that. There we go. We can pan them. And we can trim. 
a really handy device if you've got the, the balance working really well, the gate sequence of the oscillator mixer working really well, but you just feel that one sound just needs to be come up or down because maybe you've altered its distortion amount or something like that. These trims are really handy. The bend, I'm not going to demonstrate that because my keyboard doesn't have a pitch bend wheel, but basically this it will demonstrate how far to the left and right you're going and this will be your amount. Fairly straightforward. ADSR, for those who you don't know, attack, decay, sustain, release. This is the amplitude envelope and uh, attack this self-explanatory to slow these the attack and the release are the most commonly used if you want a quick release or a slow one so that really will go on forever uh, the D and the S are interrelated. The sustain is the sustain level that it sustains at. So you'll hear here. It doesn't change. It stays at full power. If we go like this, well, what's the point of that? Well, if you increase the decay, you'll get a little bite at the front. And then it'll settle at the sustain point. You can make this very sharp. give it a bit of a percussive edge so let's take that back to where it was nice and slow clone does as it says on the tin so basically clones the sound and then you can alter the pitch here so let's just keep it the same pitch as you'd expect same sample being triggered twice pretty much simultaneously let's take it down an octave or up an octave Great for instant mega patches. Fantastic stuff. And then we can also affect the uh, fine tuning here. So if you want to move this, say, like that. Oh, not so nice. And finally, we've got our glide. The minute you put this on, it'll go into monophonic. And then... Further up, the slower. Great. So that's the individual parameters, which are mirrored on this side. Uh, you next move down to the unification area where you're mixing between the two. So we've got the mix all the way to the left. It's going to be A. All the right, it's going to be B. We've actually automated an oscillator. This is actually totally from code up. Uh, so you can switch that on and it'll go between the two. This controls the speed, so we go a lot faster here. And these little handles here, they control how far it goes. So let's just slow it down a little bit. Maybe a little bit more to the left and the right. really allow, allows for some amazing fine tweaking really getting the sound you want this controls the direction of play and this controls the shape of the oscillator so you'll feel it really it's a parabolic shape it really slows down at each end and this is much more of a almost like a crossfade so much more diagonal really feel the direction change there. This is a one-way street. And this is going the other way. And this will return you straight to the middle the minute you let go of the, the note, so. Fantastic. So on to the next very fun bit, which is the gate sequencer you'll see there's a bunch of cells 
This top row is for bay A, bottom row for bay B. Uh, you can plug them in or out, just like a step sequencer. Let's bring this right down, and there you go. You change the amount. And you can also change the shape of each cell. Let's do something a little bit more intricate there. So just literally clicking on them in and out. Say if I thought, I'd be interested to see what that sounded like the, the other way round. You just flip them like that. Great stuff. Stop on release works just like the crossfade oscillator. Which is kind of good for live free uh, playing. Uh, applied to after layer effects is something that we'll return to the slightly more complicated effects section. Uh, you can alter the length of the sequence if you will. And the speed. So you can get very lost procrastinating playing around with this lovely piece of work. That is pretty much the front panel. At the bottom here we've got your volume, which is essentially your, your expression. That's usually controlled by CC11. Conversely, all of these uh, parameters you can uh, assign to various different controllers. You'll often find that the oscillate mixer is, is controlled by the modulation wheel, for example. Now, very lastly, at the bottom we've got a cartridge. Um, we, we, we were so short of space that uh, it actually covers up a bit of the text, so Blake added this rather fancy little thing in there. You'll see what seems to be an arbitrary selection of effects controls. They're basically, this is a kind of quick touch selection that I have made for this particular sound uh, based on what's going on under the bonnet, which you can get to here. I'm going to give you just a very brief overview of all of this stuff because it can get incredibly complicated. And in fact, the motor effects I'm going to save for another day because I don't want to lose this very attentive crowd that we have in attendance. So the master effects controls effects that affect the whole mix. That's the very end, almost like the bus mixer, if you will. So you'll see I've got some EQs in. But they're not actually gained up by very little. So if we go up here. It's not a frequency I would have picked, so let's do this. And you'll see that it has a favourite button next to it. If we go back to the mixer, here's EQ3. And if we want to get rid of that, we can simply detach from the dashboard, but we won't because we're happy with that. Bay A effects basically affect just everything in this little Charlie here and bay B, everything in this side. Uh, again, you can assign it to the front. You are limited to uh, eight controllers, but we think this is probably enough to be getting on with. Uh, the basic, the point of it is, is a way of us hacking you being able to automate the various uh, effects controllers. It's really powerful stuff. The aux effects, basically we have a send in bay A, which is here, which can send the different aux effects and we have a send in bay B, and there you'll see, so delay, delay, reverb, reverb, convolution, chorus, flanger, delay, delay, reverb, reverb, convolution, chorus, flanger. Um, so those basically send to the auxiliary effects, which takes us back to whether we want the gate to be before or after, which when you're using delays and reverbs and stuff like that, you may want to gate them, you may not want to have them gated. Uh, finally, we have motor effects, which is a way of controlling your effects 
in a very elaborate and clever way. But I'm going to actually dedicate an entire tutorial to that because I find it difficult to understand and pretty much no one gets it. So we need to spend a bit more time on that. So that is my overview of the eDNA engine. Thanks so much for spending time going through it with me. I hope it uh, enables you to unlock the powers of Albion One, Earth, Joey's new library, and the many others that we have using the eDNA or electric DNA uh, engine. Thanks very much for your time. Goodbye. As it um, as it goes to either side. Hi, gorgeous. Can you? Daddy's just doing a little little thing. I'll see you later. I'll come down and do trampoline in a minute. Okay. Okay. So this is more of a.